Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras. And coming up in today's newscast, top health ministry officials are now in quarantine while COVID-19 infections continue to reach dangerous new heights. A Bedouin Israeli man vindicated after years accused of being a terrorist. And finally, zebrafish leading Israeli researchers to new insights in medical cannabis. At least 40 Israeli cities and towns going into their second evening of closures tonight. The nightly curfew is set to continue every day for a week. Israeli police breaking up at least seven weddings on just the first night of curfews, though, as well as two gatherings of roughly 200 people in Jerusalem. Still, residents of these cities are mostly confused and angry with the new restrictions. The situation is impossible, impossible to, to catch the people and uh, tell them to be in prison. Not, uh, not go around, not learn in a uh, uh, Batei Knesset, no, no, not, nothing, just sit in home, it's, not, uh, it's impossible. The nightly curfews recommended by the health ministry targets supposedly red localities in which high COVID-19 infection rates and high morbidity rates are recorded. The closures, including a curfew on movement from 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. and general closures of education institutions with the exception of special education. Most of the cities named have majority Arab or ultra-Orthodox populations, members of both communities accusing the government of discrimination. ما حدا بيقول لك وين انت الكمام يلحقينها عندي اليهود فيش منه الكلام كله انا كنت قبل يومين في تل ما في منه الكلام هذا كله انا شايفهم متشددين على المناطق العربية بالذات يعني. Israeli authorities though are vehemently denying any allegations of discrimination Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calling on everyone to do their part Tuesday evening from the mostly ultra-orthodox red city of Bit Shemesh أنا أقول هذا لكل المنيجين وأنا أقول هذا كلهم كل إزخاي إسرائيل אנחנו חייבים לשמור על הנחיות משרד הבריאות. זה התנאי ההכרחי להצלחה, בנוסף לכל הצעדים האחרים שאנחנו עושים. ואנחנו עושים הרבה דברים. And now with more details of the closures just ahead of the second overnight curfew across the country, we have Israeli police spokesperson, Superintendent Mickey Rosenfeld. Mickey, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. All right, now, how many police took part in the curfew that started last night? In uh, yesterday's first evening of closure and lockdown, there were more than 3,000 police officers that were deployed in those 40 different cities, areas, and neighborhoods where police units were carrying out spot checks in order to make sure that there was a minimum amount of movement based on the uh, new government and cabinet corona decision that was made yesterday, which is being implemented for the next week, in fact, in order to try and take control of the situation and make sure that the public understands the seriousness and maintain the situation as much as possible by using Israeli National Police and its units at the scene. So, so what, you know, what means have you been using to enforce these closures along the borders? Well, there were police officers that shut down different areas, which were, in fact, uh, shut down both by police cars as well as a lot of uh, activity inside the different neighborhoods as well, preventing people from coming and going. The idea is, in those specific areas where the numbers are so incredibly high, our officers are at the scene asking people where they're coming, where they're going, where they're meant to be, and making sure that the uh, individuals themselves, I'm talking about the majority of the public who need to be inside those areas during the evening, are in fact at home, where they should be. And the reason for this being is that when we've looked back over the last two days, 
And in fact, look back over almost a week, we've seen the incredible number of people that have been affected by COVID-19 due to the fact that people have been gathering both at weddings as well as in different areas within the cities themselves. All right, well, now, now I understand that you actually broke up seven weddings yesterday, uh, but that's nothing compared to, the, to whole cities that have refused to be closed during quarantine. Uh, there are schools in Bnebrak that continue to operate as usual. Uh, Nazareth Mayor Ali Salam said this morning that he opposes the closure of his city and will open as usual as well. Uh, what can or will the police be doing to, you know, to combat these types of uh, negating regulations? Well, together with the public, we're now at a new situation and a new phase. We want to make sure that the numbers will go down as quick as possible and as much as possible in order to prevent the hospitals from being filled, those specific wards, where if the numbers go high and there won't be enough equipment, then we're going to have some serious problems. And unfortunately, the number of people that will die from COVID-19 will be incredibly high. So we're coordinating, back to your question, we're coordinating, first of all, with the leaders of the different communities to understand the new rules and regulations and to try and make sure that we're messaging to the public together with the leaders of the mayors and the councils of the importance of staying home and staying in those specific areas. Of course, people are allowed to move around for a number of different reasons, such as essentials, going to the hospitals, doctors, and other essential needs if they need that. All right, and, and what about for the holidays? Are you planning to impose any holiday lockdowns? Have you received any word of that yet? Well, as of now, we're taking things day by day. We're waiting for the uh, cabinet to make their final decisions, which will probably be in a, another couple of days, about what will happen for the festivals. But uh, the Israeli National Police are ready to implement uh, more new rules and regulations if necessary, including a full lockdown across the country. All right. Superintendent Mickey Rosenfeld, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, well, residents of Israel's 40 red-labeled cities aren't the only ones under the microscope now. Israel's top health ministry officials entering quarantine, too. Nittany Manson reporting. It seems Israel's government health leadership will be leading by example for the next 14 days. Top health ministry officials now starting to work from home as they entered quarantine on Tuesday. And this after reportedly coming in contact with a health official who is now testing positive for coronavirus. But this means that Health Minister Yuli Edelstein, Deputy Health Minister Yoav Kish, Health Ministry Director General Chezi Levy, Coronavirus Response Czar Professor Roni Gamzu, and many members from all of their offices are all entering isolation. Again, though, all of the above authorities reportedly wore masks when in meetings with the infected official, and they will continue to manage their duties from quarantine. Meanwhile, new infection numbers are out, and the outlook is not so good, with roughly 3,500 new cases of COVID-19 confirmed in the past 24 hours, including Knesset member Inon Azulai from the religious Shas party, the fifth member of Knesset to catch the disease. This brings the total number of infected in Israel to over 139,000, nearly 30,400 actively sick, and the death toll rising again to 1,048. Hospital wards overflowing and medical staff beginning to collapse too. Sheba Hospital in Ramat Gan, Israel's largest medical center already left without beds, sending COVID patients elsewhere. And hospital heads across the country telling Health Minister Edelstein that there will be no alternative to a lockdown within the next two to three weeks. Well, despite the worrying reports, not everyone is convinced. Coronavirus Committee member and Yeshatid Knesset member Yoel Razbazov, as well as 120 medical professionals, are now demanding a recount on COVID-19 deaths. Their letter to the Prime Minister and Health Ministry officials alleging that anyone who died in hospital after testing positive for coronavirus was listed as a COVID-19 death, regardless of other medical circumstances. And joining us now with more is Dr. Asher Salmon, head of the International Relations Department with the Israeli Ministry of Health. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. Now, first of all, you know, what, what do you say to the accusations that I just reported? Because the, the number of serious patients has also become, a controver has also become controversial somehow. Okay, so we have to be very clear. We, ha we do not have our own independent system. It's an international standard of how do you test, when do you test, and how do you define uh, the different categories. So the WHO, the World Health Organization, has uh, precisely uh, uh, 
detected how should it be done, and that is the way it is done. Now, we have to understand that COVID-19 is a serious disease. It's not, but it's not a common flu. And the, these denial systems are really a big, 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 I think, backdrop in our ability really to properly tackle the situation. I see. I see. So, you know, again, can you expand a little bit on, on what the WHO's criteria for, uh, you know, counting these numbers is? So basically, anybody that uh, his deterioration is related to a COVID-19 uh, validated infection is considered to be suffering from COVID-19. And if in this context, unfortunately, he dies, he would be considered a death case related to COVID-19. Well, you have to admit that some of them really suffer from, uh, I would say, uh, uh, severe uh, chronic diseases, uh, even terminal diseases like cancer or, or complicated uh, lung diseases and many other issues. But we have to understand that still, at least in Israel, many or most, most cases who have died from COVID-19 uh, would have a chance to live sometimes even years if they would not account as this infection. Wow. All right. Dr. Shamon, thank you so much for, for calling in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great evening. Now, in related news, with the coronavirus pandemic picking up speed, Israel's financial troubles are also dramatically rising. The state budget deficit now tripling to an all-time high of 87.5 billion shekels since the start of 2020, compared to the 29.2 billion in the same period of last year. In fact, in August alone, the government reportedly spent an estimated 17.3 billion shekels, or three times the amount spent in August 2019. As for Israeli individuals, however, the situation is much more dire. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu now pushing yet another stimulus package. אנחנו באמת קיבלנו החלטות נכונות בכלכלה, כתוצאה מזה, כלכלת ישראל עם כל הקשיים התכווצה כחצי מכלכלות אירופה, שהתכווצו כפליים. ישראל במצב כלכלי, יחסית למדינות האחרות, במצב הרבה יותר טוב. אם כי אני יודע, אני מודע לקשיים, אתמול הייתי ברמלה, נכנסתי לשתי חנויות קטנות, ואמרתי, שאלתי את האנשים, במה עוד אנחנו יכולים לעזור לכם? ואנחנו הולכים לעזור להם, גם לעסקים קטנים וגם לכל אזרחי ישראל. מכאן הערב אני הולך לישיבת ממשלה שבה נעביר תקציב נוסף של 11 מיליארד שקל בשבילכם, אזרחי ישראל, לאזרחים, לעסקים, למשרדים השונים, לשירותים. מחרתיים אנחנו מקיימים ישיבת ממשלה מיוחדת להיערכות לחגים ולקבוע את המתווה להמשך. And so now an additional 11 billion shekels is likely to be rolled out. In the form of various credits for individuals and businesses in Israel. But at the same time, senior finance ministry officials are presenting a particularly grim forecast that the government will have to cut upwards of 50 billion shekels in operating costs while unemployment rates remain high and nine Israelis compete for every job vacancy. ILTV contributor and consumer behavior expert Dr. Vili Abraham joins us with more. Vili, thank you so much for being with us again. Now, you know. It's a pleasure. So, so what does the forecast? by the Treasury actually predict for the next three years? Well, the projection is uh, quite uh, dire, I have to say. Economic growth is expected to be negative, 5.1%. Uh, Unemployment rate is now 10.4%. Uh, and in the most uh, optimistic scenario, it will remain so until the end of the year. According to less optimistic uh, estimates, it might reach as high as 15% by the end of the year. Uh, and, of course, there's a budget deficit of 13.4%. That's the budget deficit that we're going to reach if we are going to, you know, increase the stimulus. Right now it's 8.4. And that's very serious because the higher the deficit, the higher the budget deficit, uh, the lower the ranking uh, that you get as a country, the credit ranking. And this means that, we, that the, gov the money that the government borrows might be more expensive so it means that it will pay higher interest for the money it borrows. All right, so how will the government actually try to balance its spending under, the, under you know, various grant promises and, and the needs to keep the budget as low as possible? Well, on the one hand, it will, uh, it, what it will do is it will just uh, do what, is, you know, what it has to do, which is budget cuts uh, across the board, uh, but also increase taxes. And when we're talking about increasing taxes, 
it can come in different forms. First of all, probably income tax is going to increase, and it is very high as it is yeah. uh, in comparison to other parts of the world. We're also talking about the possibility of increasing VAT, which is also very, very wow. expensive. It's 17% right now. It's very high. And they can also increase, uh, you know, uh, the, the gas, and it can be the increase in services that we get. For example, when you go to, the, you know, the Ministry of... Uh, uh, pop, the population ministry, and you want a new passport, you pay something for it, you pay a fee. So those fees might increase as well. So we'll be paying probably more for everything. Well, I think we're all anxiously waiting for more results and more details about our financial situation. Vili, thank you so much for joining us with the details. It's a pleasure. Moving on, a tough story of cover-ups and conspiracies, but even tougher for the family of the victim who have been fighting for justice for nearly three years. Israeli Public Security Minister Amir Ohana is now calling for fresh investigations into a January 2017 incident resulting in the death of an Israeli police officer and a Bedouin teacher. The Bedouin Israeli in question, Yaqub Abu al kian finally vindicated in light of new evidence, appearing to prove his innocence in what was originally labeled a terrorist car ramming attack. <laughs> אמרו שהוא מחבל, אתמול התברר שהוא לא מחבל. אתמול התברר שבכירי הפרקליטות והמשטרה הפכו אותו למחבל. As the Bedouin village of Um al-Khiran was being readied for demolition in 2017, Al-Kian ran over a group of police officers in the village, killing one of them, Sergeant Erez Levy. Al-Kian was then subsequently shot dead. But accounts of the incident instantly diverged, the police claiming that it was a vehicular terror attack, while others claimed that he was shot first, causing him to lose control of the car. And now, following troubling Israeli media revelations, it looks as though the 47-year-old father of 12 was, in fact, not a terrorist. But it was reportedly decided then to continue the terrorist narrative so as not to hurt the police's image while they investigated Prime Minister Netanyahu. Netanyahu, for his part, is blasting the alleged corruption under which the police conducted their probes against him for the second time this week, adding dire warnings for us all. לקחו אזרח ישראלי שבפעם הראשונה נהרג בטעות ובפעם השנייה עשו לו רצח אופי לאחר מותו הפכו אותו למחבל רק כדי לפגוע בי אני אומר לך ואני אומר לכם אזרחי ישראל אם זה מה שעשו לי וזה מה שעשו למשפחת אלקיאני now, on a much lighter note, leaders from Israel and the United Arab Emirates are invited to Washington next week for an official normalization agreement signing ceremony. Nittany Manson with the details. Thursday, September 15th. That's the official date selected for the White House to host state leaders from Jerusalem and Abu Dhabi, where they'll sign the landmark normalization deal. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is saying he was proud to be taking part in this historic ceremony. But while diplomats are taking up the spotlight, Israeli and Emirati business leaders are laying down the real groundwork. Annual trade between the two countries valued at an estimated $4 billion, many industry leaders already jumping on the normalization bandwagon. 
The heads of Israel's two largest banks, Bank Apoalim and Bank Leomi, already set to lead two delegations to the Emirates to establish and coordinate economic ties. Meanwhile, Israeli budget footwear chain Scoop Shoes is announcing plans to become the first Israeli retailer to open five new branches in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, while Israeli and Emirati models posed in the sands of Dubai for an all-new pajama and nightwear campaign by the brand Fix, waving Israeli and Emirati flags during the shoot, and Israeli model Mai Tager becoming the first Israeli model to pose in the Gulf state. Then finally, not to be outdone, Gulf investors are already working on Israeli deals, including buying up so-called trophy real estate assets in East Jerusalem. Now, an official delegation from the Muslim-majority African nation of Chad has just arrived in Israel, bearing amazing news. In addition to advancing cooperation on cyber defense, intelligence, and economics, among other things, Chad may soon open a diplomatic mission in Jerusalem. The two sides discussing the appointment of ambassadors as well. Israel and Chad first officially renewed their ties in 2019, and they're now beginning to realize those new relations. And this less than a week after Serbia and, Co Serbia and Kosovo said that they'd recognize Israel and open missions in Jerusalem too. Truly, Israel's ties to the Arab world and Muslim world are entering a wholly new era. Moving on for the millions of patients worldwide taking advantage of the burgeoning medical cannabis market, the biggest problem, apart from getting the prescription itself, can often be finding a strain of cannabis that works best. While well, a new and unique research approach is suggesting that you should leave these decisions to the fish. Israeli researchers now believing that they can speed up the process of testing different types of cannabis therapies using zebrafish. And they've already used the zebrafish system to identify the potential benefits of certain cannabis strains on those suffering from sleep problems, seizures, Parkinson's disease, and pain. Apparently, using the fish is easier than other standard animal models because the zebrafish have a similar brain structure to ours, only more simple. That and their brain activity is easier for the researchers to study as it isn't hiding behind a pesky skull. The new research is being conducted by Israeli scientists from the Miguel Galilee Research Institute and Canonic, a subsidiary of computational biology company Evogene. All right, well, if you have spent any time in Tel Aviv during the summer months, chances are you stopped by Anita's ice cream shop. This little boutique ice cream parlor has become a must-visit spot for frigophiles visiting the White City. Yes, that's a lover of cold and frosty things. And after their international debuts in Australia and Puerto Rico, they're taking the show to the Big Apple. That's right, a New York branch has just opened up, and it's perfectly located near Central Park. This branch has been in the works for about three years now, according to the chain owners, and they're excited to share their signature flavors with the American crowd. Flavors like Cookie Man, which is meringue and chocolate, chocolate pistachio, and of course, watermelon and mint. They will also be adding some new friends to the mix, peanut butter and jelly, pretzel, milk chocolate, and even crack pie. So prepare your palates, people, and for those of you who cannot make it out to Israel or to the States just yet, don't worry, according to Adi Avital, one of the chain's owners, they will be continuing to expand with their sights set on other places like Lisbon, Barcelona, London, and New Zealand. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast. Tonight should be mostly clear and warm, shocker, with lows averaging 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. And then tomorrow, more of the same. Clear to partly cloudy skies and highs of about 96 degrees Fahrenheit or 36 Celsius. And now before we go, let's of course take a look at what's going viral in Israel. Oh, the Daily Dog video of Isle TV. Love it. I can't tell if the cat's trying to mess with the dog or just sneak past him. Probably both. I'm so anxious right now. <laughs> I, I guess we'll leave us all in suspense. And that is it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.4 shekels to the American dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roku TV pages. I'm Aaron Porras. Thank you so much for watching.